All right, guys, so I got another video here on the Jumper T Light, and uh, I did post a little like teaser video on my channel uh, community page on this actually working on one watt with dynamic power turned off on the Crossfire Nano transmitter module. And it did require a modification, so I am going to talk about three modifications in this video. And um, uh, they're different levels of difficulty for each of these. Uh, these are by by no means easy or for any kind of a beginner level um, person. So if you're one of those, I would recommend not doing this. Um, I would watch the previous video if you were okay with limiting to 250 milliwatts on dynamic power. Uh, I have a video from before that shows you that it works on the Molly cell 18650. This is a high quality cell here. There's different varieties of these, by the way. So this was a 35 amp version. That's the P26A. And there's a 30 amp version, which I heard from some people didn't work on 250 milliwatts. So you'll have to drop, have to drop down to 100 milliwatts, I think, if you're not going to be doing any modifications. Now, that being said, I definitely uh, urge caution here. Uh, if you open up the radio and do any kind of modification, you will void your warranty. And there's a pretty good chance if you don't know what you're doing, you'll probably destroy the radio um, and probably to beyond the point of repair, you'll have to buy a new one. So I, again, warn you, don't do this unless you really know what you're doing and you want to get this uh, working on one watt with dynamic power turned off. Now with my uh, Molly cell batteries here, these high quality cells, these are only 2,600 milliamp hours. There's another version of this one that's even better. It's like 3,000 milliamp hours. I don't have access to those. I think those are harder to get, uh, but you can get even more um, power on time with these. So with these, you can probably on this one at one watt, um, continuously powered on, maybe two hours, two hours, 15 minutes, continuously powered on. Now, um, I don't know what the Tango 2 continuous power on time on one watt is. I didn't test that. So if someone knows, let me know down in the comments. I'm curious to see if that's even in the same ballpark because that's only, it only has a 1,000, I think 1,000 milliamp hour 1S battery. And, and I was testing the 18650s or 2,600 milliamp hour batteries. So assuming similar power usage, you know, you're probably going to get more power on time with the, uh, 18650. Anyway, so first a little bit, a little bit of background so you understand what's going on here as to why it wasn't working on the higher powers uh, out of the box because the way the power setup is in the radio is very well. They, they didn't design the radio from the beginning with the external module bay in mind, which is why this is this is, this is basically an add-on and. The, because it's an add-on, they didn't design the radio originally for high-powered external modules, and that's why we're having these issues. That being said, you know, this is a fine radio at $75. If you don't need to use external modules or you need to go long range, this is going to be a perfectly fine radio for that. So I'm not, uh, you know, it's it's not a criticism of the radio itself. It's just that the way they designed it, they could have designed it with the external module in mind, and I think that they're probably going to come up with a pro version of this later, which is what my speculation was from the first video. That's what I'm, I'm thinking is that they designed this one for like sort of just entry level purposes, you know, external module as an add on, you know, and then maybe later on down the line, they'll have like a pro version that's made with two 18650s and, uh, you know, uh, not to sort of hack together external module, but sort of built into the case, you know, maybe a little bit better ergonomics and et cetera. So, you know, yeah, if you're willing to wait, I would say wait maybe, you know, in a year, they'll probably have a pro version of this out, but uh, you can't get this to work. So <laughs> sorry, I'm dragging this on. Let's get right to how this works. Um, the reason it didn't work before is the way the power was routed inside the radio. And so the power goes from the 1S battery to the main PCB board. And then there's a bunch of transistors and regulators on that board that sends 3.8 volts to the module B plug, which is on the main PCB board that this little adapter board plugs into that little hole in the back of the radio. So that this, the main PCB board is providing 3.8 volts to the uh, boost back that's in here, which is what you can see right there is behind this little piece of plastic here, this little regulator that's basically boosting the voltage from 3.8 volts to 7.8 volts to power the external modules. 
that's where the problem is, is because the power is being sent and routed through the main PCB and those components are not rated for the large current draw, um, what happens is basically you have a failure and the radio starts acting very strange because uh, that large power draw um, basically taxes the components that are on the main PCB board. And in my case, I actually uh, actually burned one of the transistors that controls the power on-off function of the, the module base. So when you normally um, change your model from an internal module model to an external module model, it'll switch the power off to the internal module and switch the power on to the external module. And that mechanism is broken on my radius. So I can't show you the other two mechanisms or the or mods that we'll, I'll talk about later in the video. I'll just show you what I did on mine and then I'll show explain what the big drawback is on what I did. So anyway, so that's how the power is routed. And so in order to sort of get the main PCB board out of the way, um, because that's what's, what's causing the problems, I changed my wiring so it's directly wired from the main battery uh, straight to the boost back here. So it's getting basically VBAT to this boost back. I wasn't sure if it was going to be okay down to like 3.3 volts or so, and I did test it. I'll show you here, and it doesn't work at down to 3.3 volts uh, on this boost back. And it, it boosts up to 7.8 volts. And this works totally fine. If you have a pretty good battery, you don't need the very best battery. I mean, I'm thinking that even like, um, you know, like a, a Sony VT, I think the, the, the VT5A or the v, VTC 4A, the, the, they're, they're not quite as high of an amp rating. I think they're like 5 amps. Probably should be fine. Um, I even tested it on, on a lower quality battery and it worked up to about 3.4 volts and then everything kind of shut down at the point. But on the Molly cell, I'll show you here, you know, this is the one that's in here now. It's uh, right now the voltage on this one is at, at around 3.3 volts and I'll show you that it's working uh, down to 3.3 volts. It's pretty close to the end of the battery because basically on the 18650, once you get down to like 3.3, 3.2 volts, you pretty much used about I don't know, 80, 85% of the capacity of the battery. And which at that point, the the current output of the battery starts to fall off as the voltage falls off. And it actually falls off pretty quickly. So I don't recommend going much lower than this if you're going to be using any kind of external module, especially if you're doing this kind of mod, because you're going to get some, basically the radio is going to start acting kind of strange and things are going to feel safe on you. Things are going to shut down. So uh, be, be aware of that. But um do want to shout out to Craig Johnstone, who help me uh, make some little diagrams here. And he also has a, a modification that you can make with a solid state relay, relay that will actually maintain the power on off function of the external module bay. But if you want to see a diagram of how the power is currently routed right here, this is what it looks like right now. 18650 to the main PCB, 3.8 volts, and then out to the 7.8 uh, volt boost back. And that's how it is currently. And so basically what I did is I routed the wires around. Basically, I um, the blue and the green wires on the module bay plug, or the module bay plug goes under the module bay, the blue is the positive and the green is the ground. And I basically took off the connector, or I took the two wires out of the connector. So it's a five pin connector. I took two of those wires out and I put them into a two pin, two pin connector. And so that is basically not being plugged into the main PCB board anymore. And instead I rerouted that and put it into another plug that's going directly to the 18650 cell. So let me go ahead, I'll just go ahead and I'll show it to you. I'll take the radio apart and show you what that looks like. 